welcome back to my channel in today's video we're going to be doing another deep car chats i really hope you've been enjoying this series so far i'm certainly enjoying filming it and i really hope that this one kind of hits a nerve with some of you i'm going to be talking really quite deeply about a topic that is really close to my heart at the moment and something that i'm still going through so i'd really appreciate some compassion and some kindness on this um, because it is still very much raw and very much a vulnerable topic for me but I hope that some of you can relate and it gives you guys some courage if you are going through a similar situation so if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and let's get into it okay so I haven't got any like tissues or anything with me today because I just thought we're just gonna go with it if I cry, I'll edit it out, you know, it's not a big deal. <laughs> but the one thing I am going to say, which is kind of a bigger deal, is I am currently in the car park that is just outside our flat. Our flat is like right here, almost right in front of me. Um, but we're in a communal car park, which when I decided to start this series, I had a private drive and my car was facing our garden and no one saw me. Whereas I'm now in a communal car park, so... It's just a little bit different because there are people walking around and there are people looking at me, but we're just going to go with it. Let's just get stuck in. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of a backstory. Just so if you're new to my channel or new to my videos and you don't know anything. Hi, my name is Lauren and I'm just really quickly going to tell you a little bit about my journey to making this video. So I have always wanted children, always, always, always. It's always been a goal of mine. It's always been a dream of mine ever since I was little. I got married at 20 and I'm currently 23, almost 24. So my husband and I were kind of getting to that stage in our relationship where, you know, we were both thinking about it. My husband's been really unsure this whole time. Josh is just not really 100% sure and I'm not sure if it's a guy thing if all guys feel like that but it's taken Josh a long time to get to that place of like actively trying um so in June 2020 we decided to start trying for a family and we also decided to coincide with that to move to Swindon um because we knew that we wanted to be close to my family when we had children so we thought okay we're starting to try let's start the ball rolling to move to Swindon so August then came and my period came with it and I was really, really gutted. But I carried on, you know, it's common for people to not get pregnant in the first month. But I was really gutted and I had to stop myself from getting upset about it because I was like, it's been a month, Lauren, like chill out. Um, so this month, however, I fell over in the shower really quite badly. Um, I hit, I still have a bruise there actually, I hit my leg on like the handlebar of the shower and I fully just fell, like I almost fell out the toilet, out and hit my head on the toilet but thankfully Josh was in the bathroom at the time so he like shouted and like it made me move my head, whatever, I don't really know what happened in the situation because it just happened so quickly but yeah, I found the shower, I was in a lot of pain and I couldn't really walk or weight bear on my leg for about two weeks, it was really bad um but we carried on trying you know august carried on we carried on um september came and the first of september i had an appointment with a podiatrist he kind of checked over everything and was like yeah you've got a lot going on here there's a lot going on so we started the journey of trying to find out what was wrong do whatever we could to fix it find out if it could be fixed um it came up that i might have hypermobile ellis daniel syndrome so we booked an appointment to see um, a consultant rheumatologist in London. Um, and so, yeah, we kind of would just got the ball rolling on stuff. We didn't really think about it, um, but I started looking into Ellis Daniel syndrome and kind of all the aspects of it, how it affects children, how it can affect you in pregnancy and all this stuff. And I was reading about it like, please, Lord, please don't let this be what I have. But anyway, in September, we on the 6th of September, Josh and I went to Cornwall um, and it was so, so lovely. But that was the week that I was due on and I was late. So we had made an agreement that I would leave the pregnancy tests at home. We would enjoy our time away and we would come home and take a test if I still hadn't come on. But I mean, <laughs> if you're a female and you've been through this and you know what it feels like to be trying for a baby and tracking it and waiting to find out if you're pregnant, I was really struggling to relax about it. My period was late. My body was doing all kinds of weird stuff. 
which for some reason is the thing when you're trying for a baby your body and your mind just trick you all the time it was negative so i got home a couple of days after i got home i started my period and yeah i was just really deflated then in october um the october the 10th i went to london for my appointment with the rheumatologist um and she examined me we had a chat we were in there for about 45 minutes um, and she looked over all of my joints checked all of my joints was it was a really thorough examination to be fair and she asked me loads and loads of questions and we left with the diagnosis of hypermobile ehlers danlos syndrome and obviously we asked questions about children and said you know my husband and i are trying you know what does this look like for that and she was very much like you know it's your decision obviously the facts are 50 percent chance of the child inheriting the gene so basically hypermobile ehlers danlos syndrome is a genetic disease so it's all about having um, a defect gene which causes this problem and it is passed down from generation to generation um so you can have the gene and you can have it as a recessive gene or a dominant gene. If you have a recessive gene, it means that you have the gene, but you have no symptoms. You don't even know that you've got it, but you pass that on to a child and the child could then either have a recessive or a dominant gene. You just don't know. So I have got a dominant gene, which means I experience symptoms. I experience pain. My joints are really, really hypermobile and I really struggle. So obviously all of those things aside we were kind of focusing on the inheritance side of things and like what does this look like for our child is this something that we want to do knowing that we are going to bring a child in who is going to have a defect gene is it selfish you know all of these things just kept coming up in our minds and i think one of my biggest fears has always been that i can't have children or that i won't be able to have children and so the start of this situation kind of started that thought process in my mind of does this mean I'm not going to be able to have children? And if I physically can't do it, um, as in if I physically can't have a baby, obviously there is adoption and all of that. But that wasn't the consideration anymore. The consideration was I've got this disease either way. I have symptoms and I really struggle. Can I actually physically be a mum? Can I actually physically look after a child? Can I actually physically do this role without needing a lot of support from josh i am really trying to come to terms with what's wrong with me and do the best that i can to deal with my illness in the best possible way that i can um, i'm trying to learn lots i'm seeing lots of medical professionals and really trying to manage what is wrong and manage my pain and get to a place where i can maintain a level of well-being you know i can maintain a level where i'm okay and i don't have big dips i don't have big highs i don't have days where i feel amazing and days where i feel really rubbish and can't get out of bed like my goal is to work on being like this so anything that is gonna stop me from being able to be like this at the minute is just not helpful so we decided to stop trying just because all of the genetic stuff and just to have time to figure out what's wrong work out how it's going to look for our future and all of that is so unknown as well which i find really hard in the sense that no one can tell us whether i have this gene whether my children will have this gene no one knows it's a 50 50 chance of the child getting the gene that's the only thing that's known the things that aren't known is how much the child will struggle if they do have the gene whether the child will have a recessive or dominant gene whether the child will be as bad as i am or won't be as bad as i am or will be worse than i am um how my disease is going to progress as i get older will my joints get worse will i ev eventually end up in a wheelchair all of these things we just do not know the answers to and the fact that we don't know the answers to them makes it so hard to actively make a decision to have a baby because it's so unknown but then it's always going to be unknown you know we could be working on my body for a year or two and we still will have no idea what the next year or two is going to look like i don't know how 2021 is going to go i could end 2021 and i could be absolutely fine living my best life i've learned how to manage my symptoms i've learned how to control it and i could be great 
we could then decide to have a baby my pregnancy could be really rough and it could really affect my body and after i have a baby i could be worse you know like we have no idea and all of it at the moment is a risk and obviously having a baby and choosing to have children is a risk anyway because no woman truly knows how their body is going to respond to pregnancy and it is different for every single person i'm just trying to focus on you know i'm a christian and god is in control and i know that he has a plan and he knew that i was going to get this diagnosis he knew that i was going to have to learn how to deal with this and maybe that's why i didn't get pregnant in the first few months you know maybe there was a reason maybe it wasn't the right time and we needed to wait for this situation to happen and we needed to deal with this before we got pregnant so i definitely think that the first step that we took was us both being ready to try like that was a big 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 step for us as a couple how do i feel i feel i feel emotional i feel hurt i feel frustrated i feel a little bit angry um my anger kind of wavers um and i feel annoyed at myself at my body i feel like my body's let me down there's just so many emotions that i'm feeling and honestly if you are in a similar situation and you are feeling all these things too it's totally normal but the important part of it is not to wallow in them and that is something I'm really, really learning. And something that really helps me with that is one, praying, two, listening to worship music and three, seeing a therapist, um, just someone who understands and knows exactly what my illness is like and knows exactly what the symptoms of my illness are and can guide me through them whilst also guiding me through it emotionally as well. I'm finding that super helpful. Um, and also talking to Josh, being open and communicating and you know he finds it really really hard when i'm constantly upset about not having a baby and i go through dips you know sometimes i'm okay for a few weeks i'll be okay and then for a couple of days i'll have a bit of a like uh, moment where i'm just crying and crying and crying and i'm just like i want to have a baby and i can't have a baby and and for us it's him communicating all of that with me him being compassionate and understanding but also me being like actually i can't be doing this to josh all the time either because it's not fair on him we both have burdens we both have things to carry and actually i can't be constantly piling that on josh because it's not fair so that's another reason i've been seeing a therapist because it's helpful to have that away from josh and just be communicating all of those wants and needs and desires and upsets and frustrations and angers with someone who isn't part of my life and isn't going to be affected by it and isn't going to be on a roller coaster every time I'm upset about it you know you know the desires of your hearts are the things that you know you're holding on to and I was holding on to it my whole life I've been like this is my dream this is what I want this is the only thing I want to achieve in life is to be a mum it's the only thing I want and you know god's telling me to let go of that grip and this is my journey to let go of the grip this is one of the things that i am being called to do in my life in this moment and i'm learning to let go of the grip you know we're going through this journey really together and it's really really growing us as a couple and i know for a fact that when if and when that time comes for us to have a baby we are going to be so ready for it and all of this stuff is building such a strong foundation for us to be parents and i think it's that's super important i think that it's so important to have that time in your relationship to build that foundation because having children is such a huge huge part of your life and a huge part of your relationship and it is something that is really going to rock your relationship too so you know god has blessed us with time we got married at 20 we're in our fourth year of marriage and building up that foundation and all this is going to do is you know make that foundation stronger so i really hope you've enjoyed this video i hope it's been somewhat helpful somewhat inspiring it's really helped me to just be able to talk it out and kind of talk through how i'm feeling that's always helpful it's always good to talk about how you feel and i would say if you are in a similar situation then if you're a christian pray about it if you're not a christian and you don't pray then you know talk about it just get those feelings out talk to someone whoever it is write it down just get the feelings out because all the time the feelings are inside you they're just boiling and boiling and boiling away and you're just gonna feel worse so 
really talking about it get it out write it down whatever you have to do just to get it off your chest and it's hard it's really hard yes i'm sure that this is going to be something else that god's going to help us get through and manage and deal with and i'm i'm not concerned in the slightest that we're not going to overcome this but i am concerned that i'm not going to have a child i am concerned about that and that's not going to change as content as i feel and even if i'm dealing with it in a good way i am going to be concerned because it's just my heart's desire and it's something that i want and it's hard to let go of it but we need to let go of these things and let God. And if you're not Christian, it's always important to let go of things because life is like that, isn't it? There's no way of you being, you can't hold on to everything, you know. It's important to let go of some things and just see what happens. So that's the situation we're in. I'm learning to let go and I'm learning to see what happens. And as a Christian, I'm also learning to trust God. So yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you have and subscribe down below to see more from me. And I'll see you in another video. Bye, guys.